Welcome to Jesse Waters Primetime. As Brett said, I'm your humble guest host tonight, Pete Hegseth. If you're like me, you're frustrated, furious about the FBI's raid on Mar-a-Lago. You don't like the DOJ's hubris or their ridiculous and so far hidden excuses for going in on a former president. And you don't like how they rifled through Melania's closet in Donald Trump's office. Let's hope we get that camera footage, which they have. Or the fact that an anti-Trump judge is giving the FBI carte blanche to redact whatever it wants from the affidavit we deserve to see. Maybe you saw Hunter Biden enjoying a free stay at a $20 million South Carolina mansion and thought to yourself, how come the FBI is not going after him? How dare you ask that question? How dare you question the FBI's credibility? Don't you know you are starting a civil war? At this point, I do think we have to have serious conversations around preparing for actual violence. Uh, people keep saying a civil war is coming. I would say a civil war is here. And I don't mean to be hyperbolic. A civil war is here. She means it. The left has been rooting for a national divorce for years. If, in fact, there is a civil war here, it's the Tiffany Crosses, the Hillary Clintons, the Pelosi's of the world who started it. They served the papers. It's people like former CIA director Michael Hayden who are to blame when they tweet that modern Republicans are, quote, the most nihilistic, dangerous and contemptible political force in all of history. This isn't new. The establishment elites don't like us. They have made that clear for quite some time. How are we going to really almost deprogram these people who have signed up for the cult of Trump? It's as if. They are members of a cult, the Trumpist cult, uh, and, and who have to be deprogrammed. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. That reminds me, I'm overdue for my monthly deprogramming. It turns out you're not just a deplorable, you're also a fascist. This clip from yesterday. Fundamentally, right now, what is on the ballot this November? Let's not make any mistake about it. And I think the Liz Cheney results from this week made it crystal clear. The choice is not between Democrat and Republican. It's between democracy and fascism. Thanks, Fernand. If they say Republicans are fascists, then how can we possibly coexist? Wait, I thought the left was the party of coexist. You know, those blue bumper stickers with all the symbols on them? They're the coexisters, right? I guess not. To the left, we can't coexist because America is fundamentally broken, fundamentally flawed, stained from our founding. And that's the root of the issue. Democrats despise our founding principles. We're not going to make America great again. It was never that great. <laughs> we have not reached greatness. So are you arguing for throwing out the Constitution? Is it a sacred document? It's certainly not sacred. All right, let's start <laughs> there. The Constitution is kind of trash. Kind of trash. The left has always looked down on America. They want to tear up the Constitution, overturn it, and rewrite it. If they had the power, they would. They don't want equal justice, God-given rights, free speech. They want to radically change our national fundamentals. Pick it. Pack the court, national popular vote, abolish the filibuster, you name it, all in the name of... Democracy, it's their favorite word. It has been for progressives for over 100 years. They thought we were a democracy. We've always been a constitutional republic. Before Obama was elected in 2008, he said that we were just days away from, quote, fundamentally transforming the United States of America. Did Obama think America was broken, a puzzle that was in a million pieces and had to be put together? It's like if you were dating someone and you tell them, Hey, baby, I love you so much. You're amazing. We should spend our lives together. We should get married. But before I propose, I'm going to need you to fundamentally transform yourself. Sounds a lot like true love. Exactly what every future fiance wants to hear. Democrats are like America's toxic ex. They want to tear the country down and fundamentally transform it. And if you don't follow them blindly and agree with what they say, well, they'll brand you the worst name in the book. 
This is how things, how bad things begin, and it's how bad things be, have begun historically. It's how the Nazi, it's what happened in Nazi Germany. They began to burn books. They began to tell people how to think. That is what's happening with people like Rick DeSantis, people like Greg Abbott. People need to wake up. There's certainly a woke problem, but it's the fact that people need to wake up as to what's happening with these two leaders in this country. Nazi DeSantis? And they don't just think you're a Nazi or he's a Nazi. They think you're stupid. The problem the Republican Party has is they got really stupid people that vote in their primaries. And when you have that, you're going to get in really stupid people demand to have really stupid leaders. And that's where the Republican Party is now. It's depressing. Do you see the pattern here? Conservatives are dumb, deplorable Nazi wannabes. They're smelly Walmart people. And they're getting in the way of the establishment elites' plans, both Democrats and Republican establishment elites. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being looked at with contempt. We all are. We're tired of watching our fellow Americans get screwed by a system that arbitrarily chooses winners and losers. We're tired of a justice system that handles Hunter Biden with kid gloves, but commits smash and grabs at Mar-a-Lago. We're tired of a government that won't spend a dime on a border wall, but spends 500 large 500,000 on a security fence around Joe Biden's beach house. We're fed up with an IRS that's going to target small businesses with an army of new employees to pay for Joe Biden's dangerous and ridiculous green agenda, sold as reducing inflation. We're fed up with a system that constantly sees our FBI missing brazen criminals after dozens of warning signs are being flashed in their faces, all because they're too focused on framing people up in Michigan raiding the former president's home and targeting parents who speak out against critical race theory. Not to mention January 6th, the top obsession of our Department of Justice. But you can't question the FBI, and you sure as heck can't question the January 6th committee, even though they've done nothing but create a spectacle and wasted time and money. We're told to shut up, because if not, then we're the problem. We're the racists and the fascists. How dare we question them? How dare we question the credibility of a corrupt system they've built and polished for their own political benefit? And if we do, then they say we're undermining faith in democracy, their favorite phrase. They want to paint us as the villain because they make people like Ron DeSantis, Governor Abbott, former President Trump, me, you, the enemy. And that allows them to justify grinding us into the ground. The ends justify the means, they believe. Now, tonight, we're not calling for a civil war or a national divorce, but the left sure is. It's plain to see that the parents, well, they've been sleeping in separate beds for years. The kids hear all the screaming and know exactly what's happening. And divorce attorneys have been consulted. Just listen to them. The left is calling for a divorce because for decades, and now out in the open, in large part due to being triggered by Donald Trump, the ultimate outsider and truth teller, they hate what we revere. The core of America, God-given rights, free speech, personal freedom, limited gov government, balance of powers, equal justice for all. We revere equality, not equity. We revere diversity of thought, not skin color obsession. We revere real, real tolerance, not so-called inclusive intolerance. Now, before a Democrat-stoked national divorce arrives, is there room for a counseling session? Is the left actually capable of loving America, despite its flaws? Could they handle a red wave in November? Could they handle a Trump win in 2024? Or would both only deepen their spite for our republic? It's scary, but it's staring us in the face because they say so. And we ought believe them when they talk. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.